next on the Gospel Bill Show. How do you, Mr. Tutwater? Nicodemus, I have got a dream. I have got a vision. You know that happens to me every time I eat pizza after 11 o'clock at night. Now, the other no, no, no. night... Nicodemus, I am talking about a dream for the people of Dry Gulch. People just like you. Really? It's the Gospel Bill Show, featuring Gospel Bill. His sidekick, Nicodemus, Miss Lana, good old Elmer Barnes, and the entire Dry Gulch gang. Uh, you'll find him right over there, Bill. Thank you. Well, good morning, Mr. Tutwater. Good day, Miss Lana. Uh, Miss Lana, am I going to be able to put this on credit? Sure, Bill. Just go ahead. Um, Miss Lana, as we both know, you have a payment coming up very soon. I'm not sure it would be advisable to be extending credit at this time. Oh, well, thank you, Mr. Tutwater, for your advice. Uh, Bill, be sure you get everything you need. Huh. Well, Bill, did you just come into town to get a little sympathy? Well, ever since you foreclosed on my farm, money's been kind of hard to come by. And so you came into town to just mooch off Miss Lana? Sometimes a man has to swallow his pride if he's going to feed his family. Bill, you come back just any time. You're always welcome here. Thank you, Miss Lana. You know, uh, in times like these, a person ought not be too generous with their resources. It could put them in jeopardy. Now, you remember that as payment time draws near. Good day. Thank you, Mr. Tutwater. Well, now, howdy, Mr. Tutwater. You know, Sheriff, I don't know how that woman has kept this business open as long as she has. Do you realize she has extended credit to half the people in this town? And to make matters worse, she charges no interest. That's because she's not greedy, Mr. Tutwater, and thank God there are people around like Miss Lana. While if it wasn't for her, some of these poor people wouldn't have anything to eat. I want to tell you... Miss Lana is a generous woman. Well, generosity can go too far. And if she doesn't make her payment, my bank is going to own this store. Hey, Miss Lana, has that old Tutwater been giving you a hard time? Oh, he's just his normal self. He's making fun of me for extending credit to some poor folk. Well, that Tutwater doesn't know anything about giving, and don't you let that old stingy soul keep you from doing what you're doing. Now, you know what the Word of God says? It says when you give to the poor, you're lending to the Lord, and you know what happens then? He always pays back. And more than what those folks could ever repay you. Yeah, you keep that up. Well, don't you worry. I'll always be a giver. Yeah, well, listen, I came over to get this telegram sent to the sheriff of Different Springs County. I'll be back over a little later on to get the reply. Here, that I'll cover. Thank you. I'll get it right out. We'll see you. I can't believe how that woman does business. Extending credit, free credit, to those deadbeat, unemployed bumpkins. I tell you, if I was in charge, I wouldn't give any free credit. No, I charge interest. Yeah, at least 25% interest. And prices, I'd raise them all if I were in charge. Hey, with Lana being in a cash bind, I'll bet she'd be open to a buyout, say 50%. And then once I got my foot in the door, I'd push her aside and take over the whole thing. <laughs> visit a couple of cool cats, and I really mean cats. This is a Bengal tiger, one of the largest members of the cat family. There are many kinds of tigers, but all tigers have one thing in common. They are found only in Asia. The largest of the tigers is the Siberian model. He often grows to be 13 feet long from head to tail and can weigh up to 650 pounds. Wow! A Siberian tiger then weighs as much as three grown men. 
These Bengal tigers are somewhat smaller than their Siberian cousins. They weigh only 350 pounds or so. But don't get any wise ideas. They're still much too big to be your house cats. Tigers usually live alone and like to hunt at night. They prey upon deer, goats, pigs, cattle, and smaller animals. Although it is rare, some Bengal tigers in India have been known to have people over for lunch. No thanks. If you ever get invited to a tiger's house for lunch, don't go. The tiger is a powerful hunter and swimmer, and it can leap up to 15 feet in a single bound. And it's very hard to see in the tall jungle grass because its stripes blend so well. That means the tiger is able to sneak up on its prey. The tiger's stripes remind us of other stripes, stripes that Jesus took upon his back. When he was beaten with a whip, he took away our infirmities and diseases. In fact, the scripture says by Jesus' stripes, we were healed. So, whenever you see a tiger, remember the stripes that Jesus took for you. And remember that God doesn't want you to be sick. So long, Mr. Tiger. We'll be back to see you again, but don't you bother coming to see us. I like you right where you are. Payment to Mr. Tatewater. Got the stock payment. I got my tithe payment. Oh my. Oh no, there's no way I can pay Mr. Tatewater and pay my tithe. Oh Lord, what am I going to do? Well, there's just nothing else I can do. Lord, I'm committed to you. I'm just going to pay my tithe. I'm going to trust you, Lord, to help me with the other. Lord, this belongs to you. How do, Mr. Tutwater? Nicodemus, I have got a dream. I have got a vision. You know that happens to me every time I eat pizza after 11 o'clock at night. Now, the other no, no, no. night... Nicodemus, I am talking about a dream for the people of Dry Gulch. People just like you. Really? Well, yes. Now, do you realize if we were in another city in another state of similar size, that the goods and services and opportunities would be much greater than we have here? Is that right? Well, sure. Take a cowboy like yourself. Well, you could go into a store. Well, say a general store like this. You could buy yourself a brand new pair of chaps. Well, now, I can buy a brand new chaps right here in Miss Lana's general store. Yes, but I'm talking about designer chaps. Oh, like them Ralphie Lorenz? Yes. Mm. Now, could you imagine walking into a store and buying yourself a big bowl of ice cream? Oh, I love ice cream. But there's nothing we can do about it. Well, now, that's where you're wrong. Now, could I share something with you confidentially? Well, sure. I happen to know that Miss Lana has a payment due on her store to the bank, and I don't believe she's going to be able to make that payment. Oh. But I've got a plan. I thought what I could do is I could buy in. I could buy, say, 50% of her store. And in so doing, we could up the inventory, increase the services, and generally make things all better. That is mighty nice of you, Mr. Tutwater. Well, I realize that it is, but I'm not sure that Miss Lana would hear it from me. But now a man like yourself, a man of your integrity, I believe she'd listen to you. Well, I'd be glad to talk to Miss Lena. Hey, I know exactly what to say. Ice cream. <sighs> Hallelujah, look at this, would you? Oh, man, this is great. <laughs> oh, I love it. Oh, I love it. Grandma, thanks a lot for this loaded card. Oh, I love you, Grandma, especially when you send me $5. <laughs> Boy, just think, I'll be able to do lots of stuff with $5. Hey, Jeannie, come in here. Did you get one of those cards from Grandma? I sure did. Well, what are you going to do with your money? Well, uh... Wait a minute. Let me tell you what I'm going to do with mine. I'm going to buy myself a dollar's worth of bubble gum. I'm going to blow the biggest bubble you've ever seen. Well, I'm going to... Well, wait a minute. Let me tell you what else I'm going to do. I'm going to buy a four-dip ice cream cone. I'm going to get a couple of chocolate milkshakes and a big candy bar. I'm going to have a blast. What are you going to do with your dough, Jeannie? Come on, tell me. Well, uh, you know that project we got going in the Sunday school class? Uh, you mean the one about the missionary kids? Yeah, the ones who don't have much money. Yeah. Well, I made a pledge the other day, and, uh, 
Well, I was a believing God to give me $5 so I could send it off. That's what I'm going to do with my money. Now look, Jeannie, that is the craziest thing I've ever heard of. The five bucks is yours. You ought to spend it on something that you like. Well, I like doing this. It makes me feel good when I give to people who don't have things. Don't you want something with that $5? I mean, wouldn't you like some candy or something like that? Well, sure, I'd like something like that, but I learned something, Eugene. If I do what God wants me to do, he'll give me some more money. You'll see. I'll be able to get all that I want. I take care of other people, and God takes care of me. Yeah, Jeannie, you're nuts. You're absolutely nuts. It just doesn't work that way. If you don't look out for yourself, no one else thinks about you. You, you ought to keep that money, Jeannie. Well, howdy, Nicodemus. Howdy. You know, I guess you could say you've done a oh, pretty fair job of running this here general store. Uh, thank you. But have you ever considered how nice it'd be if, if you could expand your inventory a little bit so, say, a feller comes in off the street, why, you'd have about anything he could ask for? Mm. And wouldn't it be great if you could kind of expand your line of clothing a little bit, you know, carry some of them finer things like uh, designer shaps for the cowboy with a flare? Mm, that'd be nice. And wouldn't it be great if you could carry some of that finer cologne, you know, for a uh, feller wants to take his uh, lady friend out, uh, he could uh, have something new for Miss Trudy Lou. That's a good idea, Nicodemus. And better than anything, Miss Lana, wouldn't it be just great if a feller could come in here with his head held high and throw his fist down and say, give me an ice cream cone and you'd have it just like in places back east? <laughs> that's all good, Nicodemus, but I don't have that kind of money. Oh, Miss Lana, that's what I come in here to talk to you about. See, I was just talking to Mr. Tutwater and why he's telling me how you're having a little bit of trouble in making your payments and, well, he's got this great idea. See, he could come in and kind of buy half of your, of your stock up and, you know, kind of... Now, just stop right there, Nicodemus. I'm not going to have T.U. Tutwater coming in and taking over my store after all the hard work I've put in it. Oh, no, 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 Miss Lana. You don't understand. See, he wouldn't be taking over your store. Why, he'd be kind of like throwing in partners with him. You know, you've heard those saying how opposites attract. You know, it'd be kind of like a cat and a mouse. Uh, or like light and darkness. Nicodemus, you can tell T.U. Tutwater that I don't want his influence in this store, and I'll make that payment one way or another. <laughs> I can hear that Nicodemus right now, that poor simpleton. Well, I'll bet you he's got that Miss Lana convinced already. Well, it's kind of like the blind leading the blind. You know, I can see it now. Tutwater's Emporium. <laughs> Give me a couple of days and I'll be making money hand over fist. <laughs> uh. But don't you think the positives far outweigh the negatives? I mean, just think about it. You could expand your inventory and we could have designer shops right here in Dry Gulch. I don't know, Nicodemus. I just don't know. Oh. Howdy, folks. What's going on here? Hey, uh, Gospel Ben, now, don't you think Miss Lana ought to sell half this general store to T.U. Tutwater? I mean, she could expand her inventory and get a full line of cologne and, and have ice cream cones just like they got back east. What do you think? Well, I didn't know your store was for sale. Well, it really isn't, but I've got a bank payment due, and Tutwater thinks I don't have the money. Well, do you have it? Well, yes and no. I, I have the payment, but I just realize I haven't paid my tithes, and... If I pay my tithes, then I'll be short on the payment. Now listen, Lana. When you honor the Lord, you won't come up short. He'll see to it that you'll have enough to do both, pay your tithes and make the payment. And I got news for you, Nicodemus. The worst thing in the world she could do is throw in with Tutwater and become a partner with him. Tutwater is stingy. He'd stop Lana from giving to the poor folks, and do you think she'd be paying tithes with him as her partner? No siree. Tutwater would hit the ceiling. He doesn't care about expanding the inventory of this store. I'll tell you what he cares about. He cares about making money. 
Tutwater will cut off all the credit to folks who can't pay on time. That means the poor people. The second thing that he'll do is raise the prices so high that only the rich will be able to buy here. And the third thing is he'll raise the interest rates on your credit to 20, 25% interest. Now, what do you think about that? That skin, Flint, Tutwater. Why, he was just a using me to get to Miss Lana. That makes me so mad. Well, Nicodemus, you can make it up to me by taking my ties by to Parson Trotter. Well, I'll be glad to, Miss Lana. I've got to pass the bank, and I'll wave this in his face. Mm. Thanks, by the way, did you get that telegram back? Sure did. Came in about ten minutes ago. Yeah. Listen, Lana, you get ready to see God move. Wow! Am I ever excited? I saw something today I'll never forget. I bet folks will be talking about this for thousands of years. It was terrific. I mean terrific. I was in this big crowd of people. We all came to hear Jesus preach. I bet there were over 5,000 of us. We ran out of food. There was nothing to eat. In fact, I was the only one in the whole crowd who had anything. I had five loaves and two fishes in my lunch. Hey, kid, what are we going to do with all this food? We got 12 baskets left, counting yours and mine. Where do you think we should put it? Well, you think maybe you guys can help me carry it over to my house since it's so late and all? No, I think we can arrange that. Thanks a lot, Mr. James. I really appreciate it. Yeah, see you in a little bit, kid. That's one of Jesus' disciples. And he and those other guys over there have 11 baskets. And mine makes 12. 12 baskets of food left over from my lunch. But that's not the great thing. The great thing is that Jesus took my lunch of five loaves and two fishes, and he multiplied it. He made it into enough food to feed everybody, 5,000 people. And there's more left over. It's a miracle. It's just great. Boy, I'll tell you, I learned something today. When you give to God, he can stretch it. You know, I don't think there's any way she's going to make that payment. I think now's the time for me to make my proposition face to face. After all, how could she refuse old Tutsi? Payment time is 3 o'clock, and time marches on. How sweet it is. Father God, I thank you that you meet my needs, and you said if I give, it shall be given unto me, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. I thank you, Father, that I am a giver, and my needs are met in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you. Well, good afternoon, Miss Lana. Just thought I'd stop by and make sure you're prepared to make your payment today. Well, I know my payment's due, but I just don't have the money yet. Well, it's little wonder the way you conduct business in here. Why, only this morning I saw you extend credit to Bill Johnson, of all people. Now, there's a man who has absolutely no financial credibility. Well, I believe in giving people a fair chance. Fair chance? Well, it just so happens that I have a fair chance to offer you. Oh, it seems like I've heard this before. What I thought I'd do is buy in, say, 50% of your store. If I do that, you don't have to make your payment. We can increase the inventory, improve the services, give Dry Gulch the kind of general store they really want. Listen, what they really want is an honest deal from an honest person. They want to know they can come in here and buy goods even if they don't have cash on hand. And if you take this store over, they won't get it. And the answer is no. Well, fine. Let me remind you that your payment is due at 3 o'clock which gives you precisely 43 and a half minutes. Good day. Tutwater's Emporium of Fine Goods. Now that has kind of a nice ring to it. Bill Johnson. <laughs> Now, if she extends more credit to him, that store is mine for sure. <laughs> Howdy, Miss Lana. Well, hello, Bill. Say, you sure look different than you did this morning. Well, things are different. Well, how's that? Well, even though Mr. Tutwater foreclosed on my farm, I had some land out back, and this afternoon, we struck oil. Ooh, that's great! And you know, Miss Lana, you're the first one I come to. You've been extending me credit and all for the last couple of months. I just, I just want to go ahead and pay you off. Well, thank you, Bill. I appreciate that. See you later, Miss Lana. Bless God. Oh, oh, I feel terrible. My head hurts. My stomach hurts. And the thought of ice cream makes me sick. I could care less if I ever see another ice cream cone again. 
and candy. I'll never eat another candy bar. I ate too much. I even hate bubble gum. Ooh, Jean, are you feeling better? No, I feel rotten, Jeannie. Absolutely rotten. Oh, all that stuff made me sick. Too much candy, too much ice cream, and too much bubble gum. Oh, oh, oh. Hey, I got something good to tell you. Oh, I hope it's good. I could use some good news. Well, you know the five dollars I gave to the mission fund? Yeah. You kept it, huh? No, I didn't keep it. Well, then what's that money in your hand? This is more money. I gave the money to the mission fund, and God blessed me. Uh, Miss Jones across the street asked me to come over and help her pack some dishes, and she said I could come over and help her again next week. Oh, Jean, I am going to make a lot of money. Hey, it's all because I gave to God and I considered him first. Boy, am I ever happy. It just pays to obey the Lord, doesn't it? Oh, I wish I could say that. My, oh, my, this is so fine. Land has been tied into a bind. Ticking, ticking, down goes the time. In less than an hour, this store will be mine. <laughs> <clears throat> well, Miss Lana, why, you still have 42 minutes and 22 seconds. What's the hurry? Just want to make my payment, Mr. Tutwater. Thank you. Could you settle down, please? Quiet! Thank you. Uh, I am your substitute teacher for today. My name is Mr. Nicodemus. <coughs> now, I'm very glad to be here today because I have a very important lesson I want to teach everybody. So I want you all to get out your notepads and get ready to take notes. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, we have the victory. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, demons will have to flee. We can know what God will do, what he says in his word. questions so far. Yeah. Okay, Mr. Nicodemus, what do I do when I get bad thoughts or want to do bad things? Well, that's easy. And it works every time. You just say, I command you, Satan, in the name of the Lord, to pick up your weapons and flee. For the Lord has given me authority to walk all over thee. I command you, Satan, the name of the Lord to pick up your weapons and flee for the Lord has given me authority to walk all over thee we can 
You know, the Bible says in Ecclesiastes 11.1, 1, Cast your bread upon the water, for you shall find it after many days. Another way that scripture can be read is, Cast your bread upon the water, and it will come back to you again. Now, you know, that's what happens when you give to God. When you give to God of your bread, it comes back to you. God sees that that will happen. You know, a long time ago, people didn't make money. What they did is they farmed, and when they got done with their crops, they had enough to make bread. Well, the Bible says, cast your bread on the water. Well, nowadays, since we don't make bread, that is, most of us don't, we make money instead. If we cast our money to things that God wants us to give it to, that money will return to us. Because the Bible says that when you give, it shall be given unto you. There is no way that you can give to God without Him giving it back to you. He causes things to happen that the money just comes back to you and you get surprised in every way that bread just keeps right on coming back. So remember, it always pays to give to God because when you give to Him, He causes your bread to come back. You know, the truth of the matter is, you just can't outgive God. ice cream. 